This is the Epiphone Les Paul Prophecy. Outside the recent signature models, this is probably the most hyped Epiphone line in recent years. But is the hype justified? Well you and me are going to find out. Let's get into it. What is up my dudes? It's awesome to see you and welcome back. I'm Jack and in this video I want to share my thoughts and feelings with you about the latest iteration of Epiphone's Les Paul Prophecy. If you caught my recent video about the inspired by Gibson Epiphone Les Paul Custom Coa, then you might remember that I said I'd ordered two different Les Pauls from their current lineup. This is the other one that I picked up, and there's a few reasons that I really wanted to get my hands on this guitar. I'm primarily a rock and metal guy, right? So when I heard that the new prophecies were going to include Fishman Electronics, that piqued my interest massively. Fishman's reputation with rock and metal guitarists is strong, and as I've never tried them before, the opportunity to pick up a Les Paul that's got them equipped as standard was too much to ignore. The other big reason is that Epiphone used to make a Les Paul Prophecy that was sick. It was an EMG equipped beast and although I never had one myself, I played them quite a lot and I always thought they were awesome. But are the new prophecies better? Before we take a look together, I just want to point out that this video is obviously not sponsored. If you look somewhere down there for my subscribe account, you'll know that I'm not a big enough channel for that yet. At this point, I'm just some random guy on the internet who likes talking to you guys about cool guitars. And for that, I'm massively thankful that you decided to click my video. Anyway, let's get into it, shall we? I'm going to start by saying there are a lot of things about this guitar that I think are awesome, but there are a couple of things that I'm not so keen on, which I'll tell you about in a minute. To echo what I said in my last review, if the bad Epiphone tattoo doesn't give it away, I've always been a fan of the brand. And it makes me really happy to see Epiphone stepping out of Gibson's shadow and making some really awesome guitars. The new Prophecy takes the staples of a Les Paul and then adds some killer modern features. It's still a mahogany set neck construction with the classic burst that you see on a lot of Les Pauls and this awesome binding. But now it's been turned up to 11. 11? It's got 24 jumbo frets, Grover locking tuners, contour calves, weight relief and the Fishman electronics that I mentioned a minute ago. If you think the Les Paul Custom is a refined all-rounder, then this is laser focused and knows exactly what it is. It's unapologetically a rock and metal guitar and I think that's sick. The finish is stunning too. It took me a while to decide which one I wanted because they're all really good, but I finally decided on Red Tiger. Red Tiger dude, honestly. Sometimes I wonder about guitar colour names. Anyway, the colour isn't overstated like the name, but it is awesome. And another nice touch is that they've coordinated the fret inlays with the colour of the body. It's a small thing that I think reflects the overall attention to detail that they've put into these guitars. The age gloss is a cool feature too. Now, it's not quite a satin finish and it does have a tendency to get a little sticky at times, even though my hands don't really sweat, but it looks great and it does improve the feel of the instrument. The overall fit and finish of the guitar is really high too, but there is a little bit of untidiness on the binding where the taping off could have been a little bit better. However, it's purely cosmetic. I'm not the type of guy to worry about that too much when the overall package is this good. In terms of hardware, the brush nickel everywhere gives the guitar even more attitude. Not only does it look good, but the Grover locking tuners, bridge and tailpiece and the graph tech nut do an amazing job of keeping everything in tune. Well, aside from the G-string, but if you've played a Les Paul, you know about that already. But how does it play? Well, necks and fretwork are the most important part of any guitar in my opinion, so we'll talk about that first. You could have the nicest guitar in the world, but if the neck sucks, then what's the point? That's something that you don't need to worry about here. The prophecies have something called an asymmetrical slim taper neck profile, which is similar to the neck profile on the Les Paul Custom Cower that I really like, but it thins out towards the treble side of the neck. Honestly, it's something that you might not even notice if you didn't know about it, but it does make for a bit more of a comfortable feel in the end, so that's cool. Also, in terms of fretwork, they're awesome. I spoke about this a lot in my last video, so I won't bang on about it too much again, but Epiphone have really put so much effort into leveling up the fretwork game. It's something that they obviously cared about improving and it really does show. These jumbo frets are smooth, level, perfectly round, any old reports of people saying that the fretwork's bad on the new Epiphones, you don't really need to worry about that anymore in my opinion. And as you get further up the neck, we see something wonderful. The powers that be within Epiphone's design team have decided to bless us with some actual upper fret access and it's so good. I actually sat with the Prophecy and the Les Paul Custom Coa for a little while while I was writing the notes of this video and I can tell you the difference between the two is huge. The Prophecy wins hands down dude, the upper fret access is just so much better. You can reach further much more easily but this actually comes down to a combination of a couple of things. As well as the access at the neck heel, because the Prophecy's neck is longer you get more of the frets you need further away from the body. This does make the guitar slightly longer than a normal Les Paul overall, but it still does retain that 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length. It does this by moving the bridge forward a little bit, 
But I think overall, from a playability standpoint, it's a really solid move and I like it a lot. But Epiphone must have thought, why stop there? Let's put a belly cut on it as well. So yeah, this is a Les Paul with a spot to slot your torso in. And honestly, I don't think it makes that much difference. <laughs> It's actually one of the things that I'm not super keen on. We're all different shapes and sizes, I know, and guitars sit on us all differently. But even though this has got a belly cut, it still jabs into my ribs a little bit like a normal Les Paul would anyway. I know this is just my opinion on a very small issue, but I think they should have just not bothered with the belly cut. We all know Les Pauls can be a little bit jabby in the old ribs. Without the cut, they could have bound the back. And to be honest, I think the guitar needs it. The guitar looks super high-end from the front, but then you flip it over and it's just a little bit underwhelming. But believe me, there are a select few of us that care whether a guitar's got a nice back too. Comment below if you like a nice guitar back. <laughs> Overall though, Epiphone have made some epic design choices with this guitar and it really does play incredibly well as a result. Personally, I think they deserve massive props for taking the traditional and then bringing it up to date in a way that makes sense. And I just want to take a moment to say thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. The fact that you've chosen to watch me, some rando on the internet, talk about guitar means a huge amount to me and I appreciate you massively for it. If you enjoyed the video so far and you want to help the channel even more than you already have by watching this video, please do consider it in the like button to let YouTube know it was worth your time. I post new videos and backing tracks every single week and I would love for you to stick around by becoming a subscriber too. Anyway, thank you again, you're awesome. Let's get back to talking about this guitar. Let's talk about these Fishmen, shall we, because they are so good. It's so clear to me now why they're becoming the favourite pickups of loads of guitarists. They're articulate, responsive and just so clear, even under loads of gain. But on top of that, they're multi-voiced. They've got three distinct voicings, which are a hot metal humbucker, the Gibson Burst Bucker sound, which is more of a classic tone, and then like an overwound single coil sound for like chimey cleans and stuff. Tone wise, I think this guitar can probably do everything you'd need it to do. And in a recording context, these pickups are just incredible. One nice trick I like a lot for the metal and the classic voicings is to use them both to double track my guitars. By layering one voicing over the other, I've found that the different frequency responses really like thicken out your guitar tone. It's so good. And you can do that all by just pulling a switch, dude. It's awesome, man. It's like a switch that lets you work smarter, not harder. So the Fishman Fluence pickups have really blown me away and I'm kind of kicking myself that I've been missing out on them for so long. This particular set are unique to the Prophecy series of guitars, which I think is a super smart idea on Epiphone and Fishman's part. It gives the Prophecies like a really strong, unique selling point, but then also puts Fishman's in the hands of people that wouldn't necessarily just buy like a set of Fishman pickups or something like that. Having this guitar has definitely got me thinking about buying and at least one more set of Fishmans for one of my other guitars. All three voicings are incredibly usable, although the hotter metal tone is by far my favourite and will probably be the favourite of most people who play a Prophecy. These pickups make this a metal guitar with options and flexibility, and I'm all about brands that do what they can to like really push what their guitars are capable of, rather than just like accepting the bare minimum. So with that, let's have a little listen. I'm gonna play you an improvised solo over a backing track that I wrote on this guitar, and if you want to check the backing track out, the link will be in the description too, so that you can jam over it. Anyway, let's check it out. So final thoughts, and I think it's pretty clear what I think about this guitar. Epiphone have once again created a top tier affordable guitar that I think can really hold its own. In my eyes, it definitely lives up to the hype that it received when it was released. Although it does have a couple of little hang ups. The age gloss finish is a step in the right direction, 
but it is still a gloss and it does get a little bit tacky at times. I'd much prefer to see a true satin finish to stop your hand from getting stuck on the back of the neck when you're playing. Also, the belly cut is just a little bit weird. It's far from uncomfortable, but you can still feel the guitar in your ribs a little bit from time to time, which in my experience is just a Les Paul thing. If they'd have chucked some back binding on here instead, then I think that would have elevated the look of the guitar so much. And I'm sure they could have done it even with the access cutaway. They have the technology, <laughs> though these are just teeny tiny problems on an otherwise incredible instrument. They've not stopped me playing this guitar one bit and I'm constantly picking up. It's always at the front of my guitar rack ready to go. In my opinion, this new Les Paul Prophecy has really carved out its own place in the market and rightly so. To me, this is Epiphone's answer to like the ESP LTD Eclipse or EC1000. Only it's got better electronics, more tonal variety, and the look is straight out of the Gibson family rather than like 2007 metalcore videos. I absolutely love it. And if you're a rock and metal dude, then I'm pretty sure you're gonna love it as well. So if you've stuck around to the end, you're an absolute legend. Thank you so much once again. And I hope my ramblings helped you with it. If they did, be sure to hit that like button to satisfy the whims of the YouTube overlords. And also consider subscribing if you like new backing tracks and videos every week. I'd love for you to stick around. With that, take care mate, stay safe. I'll see you later.